Okay, I think we can begin. I think we have a good um, quorum here. So good morning, good afternoon or evening, depending on where everyone is. Um, welcome to Optra Scan and welcome to this webinar. Uh, I know we have a group from, you know, you're all around the world. Um, you're joining in, dialing in from you know different places. So we're really excited and honored to have you here. Um, and really excited to be talking to you guys today and to this group. So if anyone has any issues or, or if anyone's not able to view the slides or hear me or anything, just please, you know, uh, put it up in the chat or just shout out and let us know if there's any issues, but otherwise we'll begin. So before I begin, I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, my name is Devika. I am the managing director here at OptraScan. Um, OptraScan is a digital pathology company. We've been in digital pathology uh, for many, many years now. Um, I am, you know, a biomedical engineer and MBA. I've been in the healthcare space all my life. So this is really, this industry is really all I know. And which is why um, I'm super excited to be discussing this specific topic with you today. Um, <clears throat> you know, this topic is something that's really exciting. And this has been shaping and redefining the future of pathology, um, especially, you know, going forward, uh, it's going to be saving so much effort and so much time. Um, and, and that's what we're here to talk about today. So uh, without any further ado, I would like to begin by discussing artificial intelligence assisted uh, IHC staining, or as you can call it, virtually um, virtual IHC staining. So before we actually dive into that, let me just quickly take a step back and introduce OptraScan. Um, most of you may already know what OptraScan is, but to those who don't, um, you know, we are a digital pathology company. Like I said, we're an end-to-end -end solutions provider for digital pathology. So we offer, you know, everything from slide scanners to image management software, as well as AI based analytics to support a pathologist workflow from start to finish. We understand that all labs, um, you know, have different budgets and, and, and different requirements. And so we offer different types of sales models, including buying or even leasing or, or even a pay as you go or pay per slide model. Um, and our scanners range from low to medium to high throughput, which are designed to suit labs of any size and scale. And, you know, we stand by our mission, which is to revolutionize the field of pathology through constant innovation. And we are built by pathologists for pathologists. So we, you know, we know exactly um, what is the pain points and we know how to solve them. Now let's go back to the main topic of today, which is AI based virtual IHC staining. So this, uh, this webinar will be divided into four parts. Um, you know, we'll begin by introducing virtual staining followed by uh, discussing the advantages in virtual staining. Then I'll walk you through all the technical development of this innovation. I'll, I'll show you what we did at our end and how this was developed. And we'll end with some thoughts on the future of this technology um, and, and sort of where this is headed. Now, if you have any questions while I'm presenting, please do put it in the chat um, or wait until the end and, and we can discuss. Since I'm presenting, I'm not really able to view the chat right now, but as we wrap up the presentation, I'm happy to sort of go through the questions and answer them. Okay, so with that, let's get started. So to, in virtual staining, um, before we dive into sort of what this technology is, what I wanted to sort of, uh, you know, outline was the, the standard workflow, right? You you cut a section of the tissue, you first do the h &E staining, you view it under the microscope. Now, as a pathologist, uh, you know, if you feel like, okay, I want to see how the, uh, this, this sample or this section looks like under IHC stain, what do you do? You go back to the tissue block, you cut another tissue, um, similar section of the tissue, you stain it with IHC and you put, you put it under the microscope and you view it under the microscope. Instead of that, um, imagine if in a pathology landscape, all you needed to do was first cut the tissue and stain it with an H&E stain slide. And now if you wish to uh, view the IHC stain for the same section, you don't have to go back and cut another tissue and process the whole thing again. All you need to do is just press generate virtual stain on your software. And as this in this video, if you just click generate virtual stain, you will, you know, the algorithm will create that IHC image for you. And this will also help you show and compare the H and E and IHC stain of the same of the same section. So how does you know how does this sound? I mean, this this in this in this case, you're saving time, 
you're, sa you're saving, um, you know, your reagents, you're saving costs, and you're increasing your efficiency all in one. So this is exactly, um, you know, the thought process behind what we decided to do this this exciting innovation is is that we wanted to we wanted to create something that would really save time and effort um, in the pathologist community. Now, of course, you may be curious to see how good the virtually generated stain is. We were curious too, so we we sort of compared it um, with the real IHC stain sample. Uh, you know, on the right, on the top, you can see the real IHC stain, and on the bottom, um, you can see the virtually generated IHC stain. So it 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 compares really well, and of course, as we go through the presentation, we will show you um, the statistic correlation equivalence of the data that we have um, to show, show to show sort of the high correlation or accuracy of our output. But this is sort of a quick overview and overlay to show you um, how well our algorithm functions and to generate an, uh, a virtually stained IHC image. Okay, so let's talk more about this. What is virtual staining? And let's understand this. So virtual staining, um, as you may or may not have heard, is a revolutionary technique that digitally stimulates and simulates the process of histological staining, enabling visualization without the need for physical staining. And this is extremely valuable the, uh, you know, for the pathologist community in terms of efficiency and turnaround time. Um, so how, how does this exactly work? It works by image processing, algorithmic precision, and standardization. Now, the image is processed by extracting something called a feature map, uh, which, which sort of maps out the cellular features, and it undergoes a series of computational processes to generate the stain. And our algorithms, our AI, is trained on vast data sets, and that helps to identify the tissue structures and understand the cell morphology. And this is what allows for the reproducible results, independent of the straining protocol. So that's what brings in, uh, you know, standardization and reproducibility. I know the one of the biggest pain points in IHC staining is that standardization, you know, the staining protocols and staining methods differ from technician to technician, person to person. So this eliminates that and brings in sort of that reproducibility. Um, so if you're, you know, wondering how this impacts the pathology practice, me and you know everyone who has witnessed this technology would only say that it benefits. Um, <clears throat> you know, it saves time, it saves costs, it preserves tissue samples because you don't have to go back and cut a new section of the tissue for IHC. You can use the same uh, sample, and of course, it also aids in educational and training scenarios. You know, virtual staining saves time by eliminating the need for multiple rounds of staining on the on different tissue sections. And since there are no physical dyes involved in the IHC staining, the pathologist can actually generate multiple stains on the same tissue. So you can also sort of think about a multi-stained um, image generation, all virtually, of course. And this also helps in education across borders, offering a diverse range of simulations. Now, you know, imagine you're generating this virtual stain. It is so easy to share this image across borders to, you know, your colleagues or in educational settings to students all across the world. You don't need physical tissues, physical staining, physical blocks anymore. Now let's dive a little bit into the advantages of virtual staining. So what are these advantages? You know, virtual, virtually generated staining allows for tailored staining, of course, um, offering flexibility in color, intensity, etc. because it's all digitally generated. You have the control to sort of um, control the the color, the stain intensity, and it's not something that you have to rely on your reagents for. And again, since it's all digitally generated, it eliminates the need for toxic and costly reagents. Um, you know, we all know that the these reagents are a major burden to labs, um, and, and these are costly, they're also toxic, and so digitally uh, staining eliminates all of that. And virtual stain, generated stain also helps with facilitating quantitative analysis of biomarker expression. Um, because there is so much data involved in generating this, uh, this helps to enable the precise measurement of cellular characteristics and biomarker expression. And, and supported by data, uh, it has scope for, you know, and I'm going to be discussing this in, in a few slides down the line, but this has scope for, uh, you know, precision medicine, predictive modeling. It, it, it sort of, um, you know, opens up doors and avenues to new revenue streams for pathologists and for labs and, and new um, analysis in turn. And, and the cherry on the top is that 
it very seamlessly integrates with digital pathology, um, you know, because this incorporates uh, the pre-existing workflows in a digital pathology. You have the scanned image, you have um, the virtually stained algorithms embedded onto the imaging viewing platform. So you don't really have to do anything different uh, it's, apart from having this digital pathology system. Like I said, uh, this comes with immense data driven insights. You know, the combination of AI and virtual staining generates data rich pathology images, which fosters the extraction of valuable insights for precision medicine, for research, for development of novel diagnostic tools. And also this enables scalable solutions for pathology, making multi-stained images accessible for remote consultations, collaborative research and educational incentives. So let me walk you uh, quickly through how this virtual staining model was developed in-house. Now, OptraScan has been in the field of digital pathology for a really, really long time. Um, you know, our engineers, our, our uh, AI developers have, have been in the space for a long time. We know exactly what is needed, how things work. So this was something that was, uh, you know, really a, an exciting passion project for us. And, um, you know, so I'm going to be sort of, again, really simplifying this process, but, um, you know, I can guarantee that this was, you know, a long winded development and it took a lot of, lot of discussions, thinking, efforts, training, testing, validation for our team to come up to. So this by no means, um, you know, justifies the extent and the hard work and the efforts that, that everyone has put in to develop this. What we did, um, is we have based our model on something called um, a generative adversarial network. Uh, it's called GAN framework, where in simple terms, there just just think of it as as that's two things. Okay, there's a generator and a discriminator. So the way we did it is that we fed our HNE and IHC stain real images to the model. The job of the generator of this model is to generate um, an IHC stain image out of the real HNE stained image and uh, generated as close to the real IHC, uh, IHC stain image as possible. The job of the discriminator is to discriminate between the real and I, um, you know, virtually stained IHC image and find out this fake image. And, and you know, uh, the discriminator is going to uh, compare the images and spit out the results and say, hey, it's fake. Uh, generator, go and generate another image. And this cycle is going to be repeated until the generator generates an image that the discriminator cannot discriminate and it actually thinks it's a real image and so this model is what we have is the basis of our um you know virtually stained ihc images algorithms where um you know this discriminator now is unable to discriminate between a real uh, stained image and a virtually stained image and um that's really the basis of our of course this model our algorithms have been tested on hundreds and thousands of data sets on hundreds and thousands of um you know, fake IHC images, uh, when I say fake, I mean virtually generated IHC images, real, uh, you know, really generated IHC images, HE images. And then what we do at the end of it is that we have a blind uh, data set that has not been used in this model. And this blind data set is then fed into this uh, model at the very end, once we're confident and once the discriminator cannot discriminate anymore. And we feed it with um, HE stained images and we ask it to generate IHC stained images. And, um, you know, the results we saw and the results that we have validated are very, very exciting. They're very, you know, they go very close to the true IHC stain image. And, and this is something that, you know, not, not it's not been done before. This is new. This is novel. And we're excited to show it to you all. And we're excited to show it to the world. And we're really hoping and looking forward for all of you to try it out and, and let us know. You let us know what you think and, and um, give us your feedback. And, and you know, we're we're in this process to continuously develop and improve our models. And so, you know, any and all feedback and uh, any and all inputs were, are, are highly appreciated. And, you know, of course, we had to evaluate our results for accuracy. Um, you know, we wanted to make sure that, you know, this is accurate, this is, uh, it's, it's right. And so OptraScan is proud to say that we have achieved a 90% correlation. Now, this correlation was tested through um, what I'd mentioned before called the feature map abstraction, where what we do is we extract the cellular features from both the images. Um, when I say both the images, I mean the virtually stained image and the ground truth image, and we evaluate the correlation between them. And this is where we get the 90% correlation, and, and we know that, you know, we're onto something here. We're onto something really, really good here. 
We also tested this out uh, by testing the percent of true positivity that we got in the results. And, and we're really excited to get an 81% 80, true positivity rate, which is as of now the highest in class. And of course, we're going to be continuously developing it and, and improving that, that results. And third, but the most important was the evaluation done by the pathologist, of course. So data aside, we wanted our medical advisory board of pathologists from Stanford, Yale. So OptraScan, um, for those who don't know, have a medical advisory board from Stanford, from Yale, um, from UCSF. Uh, and, and these are all the, you know, the chair of pathology from, from these, uh, you know, high, high end and highly value schools. And so our board of pathologists validated the high degree of agreement between the virtually stained image and the corresponding histologically stained ones. And our board is satisfied. We've shown it to different pathologists from around the world. They are satisfied. And so now we are you know, presenting our results and presenting our technology to you all and to the world. And um, you know, we're really excited. And you know, I keep on saying this, but we're really excited to sort of show our baby to the world. So going forward, of course, this technology is only going to improve with time. Um, you know, advancements in the in the GAN framework, like I'd mentioned, the framework that is that is the the base and the soul of this of this model, will further enhance the realism and the fidelity of these generated images. Um, we're also focusing now on multi-stain uh, you know Im stained images uh, with diverse combinations of stains to help expand the utility of vir virtual staining for comprehensive tissue analysis. Um, and, you know, of course, this is the development of GAN in enabled virtual staining model paves the way for clinical implementation and it offers pathologists advanced tools for accurate and detailed visualization of tissue components in digital pathology. So what is the future of this? I mean, virtual staining is itself the future of pathology, but <clears throat> where is it headed? Like I think I mentioned um, in the earlier section of this presentation, the biggest focus of virtual staining would be on precision medicine. Um, you know, AI and virtual staining holds the potential to advance predictive diagnosis because of the vast amounts of data that we have. Um, and this would be done by leveraging the machine learning algorithms to identify early indicators of disease progression and treatment response from these multi-stain digital pathology images. So, you know, Adding and enabling that data-based analytics um, to pathology has so much scope in, in predictive modeling, um, you know, especially when it comes to sort of early indicators of disease progression. The second thing is, of course, precision medicine. Um, you know, future applications may focus on integrating this AI-enabled virtual staining with precision medicine initiatives, um, you know, enabling tailored treatment strategies, again, based on this, uh, you know, comprehensive tissue analysis and biomarker profiling. And, um, you know, th third but not the least is sort of prognostic insights. This is, it's, it's sort of, these models could provide pathologists with prognostic insights by um, helping them predict disease outcomes and guide that personal, personal care. So this, this, you know, all this leads to is increased efficiency of diagnostic due to a reduction in time needed for restaining. And you know we are we are sort of committed to integration of our virtual staining technology with emerging technologies to stay up to date with innovations. And this is something, you know, this is um, you know it's in the long term, it's in the future. Uh, right now, we want to focus on virtual staining, of course, but um, the 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 sort of biggest benefit of virtual staining lies, lies in remote consultations right right now if you need um if you, if you need a second consultation in pathology it there's a heavy dependency on physically shipping these tissue blocks and physically shipping glass slides and physically shipping stain slides across borders across regions and and i mean you all know this as much as we do that when in, in physical shipping there's you know, there's a chance of samples getting destroyed, um, you know, delays in diagnosis and and amongst amongst many other issues. Right. So the biggest benefit of this virtual staining lies in remote consultations because, um, you know, you can these multi stained images that are generated that can be easily and securely shared and analyzed and um, across geographical borders. So this can foster, uh, you know, foster collaborative diagnostic practices because you, you it's it's as simple as you know, sending that image across to your, uh, you know, colleagues or to different labs. And all they have to do is open it up in our image viewing software and view it. And 
this eliminates any any sort of physical shipping and shipment and you know, movement of samples across borders. And um, you know this the the third and the the most uh, you know useful uh, use of this technology and is of course automation and automation and workflow optimization. So future applications may focus on the automation and workflow optimization of virtual sailing processes, um, and we're going to be focusing on leveraging AI to you know further streamline the generation um, of analysis and interpretation of these multi-stain pathology images. Um, the the where this technology really is headed is sort of for that further analysis and interpretation of these multiple um, you know multiply stained and uh, images. And so we're we're sort of, and the third and um, the really interesting example, which which of course it's it's quite done in the future, but that's something that we're we're really curious about is augmented reality or AI integration in this. So the integration of AI and virtual staining with technologies such as augmented reality could revolutionize the visual visualization and interactive analysis of multi-stain digital pathology images. Because now what we're talking about is you know, seeing in in truly in person in the AR in, um, way, these interactive interactions of this multi stains in um, on our samples, and sort of visualizing and also looking at that analysis um, in in sort of in real life, I would say in a way. Um, and this is only poised to you know enhance diagnostic capabilities and educational experiences mostly. So further going ahead, um, you know, eliminating the the aspect of geographical borders and their limitations, this really would benefit educational practices going forward. So as OfterScan, we're, you know, we're one of the first um, to come up and, you know, display this technology. Virtual staining is really, you know, integrated and created for, for pathologists, for labs and for, for technicians who, um, for, and, and, you know, we want to come in and help create more efficiency, um, you know, reduce the burden, reduce the, the and when I say burden, I mean financial as as well as sort of um, increase the efficiency in, in labs and and really help um, speed up the diagnosis because, you know, ultimately at the end of everything that we all are doing is a patient and their life um, at hand. And so we want to make sure that we're coming in with reliable state-of-the-art and futuristic technology that will only help pathologists to speed up the process of diagnosis, to evaluate more samples, to you know get second consultations, remote um, consultations with ease, and to really uh, you know provide outputs and 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 really help impact and improve that patient's life. So this brings us to the end of the topic. Um, thank you very much. You know we really had a lovely time discussing this exciting innovation with you. And I hope you all are as excited about this as I am. Um, you know, I would be more than happy to discuss how this technology can help your labs. Or if you are considering a switch to digital pathology, I would love to guide you through it. Um, you know, this this we are here to sort of share this technology with you. Uh, so if you are interested in trying out this technology um, in your labs, trying out and, and seeing how this works, we're more than happy to offer, you know, a free trial. Uh, we would love your feedback. So please do, uh, there's an email on screen here if you want to uh, reach out to us for more information um, and or have any questions or want to request a free trial for this technology, uh, you know, do, do please, please do reach out to us. Um, you you know, you can also, I'm available on LinkedIn or, or you can reach to me through this info at optrascan.com email as well. And I'd love to guide you through it. Um, you know, we Optoscan also offers digital pathology scanners and AI-based analytics and image management software. So if you are interested in the whole um, solution as well, we're happy to uh, guide you through it as well. So have a lovely rest of the day, everyone. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay back for uh, some time on this webinar. If anyone has any follow-up questions, please, please feel free to ask and I'm happy to answer. But um, and I'll, I'll stop sharing for now so that I can actually see the chat screen and see if there's anybody asking any questions. But thank you very much. Uh, I had a great time sharing and I hope you had a great time listening to this as well.
OK, so I see a question about how many staining antibody modes have you developed and validated? So right now we are we are focused on ER um, and PR. Um, we're doing KI67 next. Uh, we plan to do sort of increase um, our our library of these modes one by one. So ERPR and then in process for KI67. OK, I'm just going through the questions. Give me one minute, guys. So what is the mechanism by which the AI detects spe specific protein expression based on H and E images? So we have a combination. Our models go through a combination of a few different predictive analytics. Um, we look at sort of cell morphology. We look at uh, you know the the chemistry. We look at sort of it's also predictive modeling and based on patterns. Uh, so it's it's sort of a mixture and combination of all of these three things that helps predict um, you know specific protein expressions based on H and E images. Of course, these models are trained on hundreds of thousands of previously analyzed um, samples, which have, uh, you know, biochemistry uh, expressions as well as, um, of course, the cellular morphology. And so sort of a combination of all of these and above. And the third one is, how does the system know the antigens the cell have in order to project the positive antibody? What the virtually, um, you know, IHC stain staining technology is doing is it's really giving the pathologist um, a prediction of what the IHC stain image is going to look like based on historical data, based on um, historical stains, and based on sort of how, uh, you know, specific IHC, uh, H&E stain images react and convert to IHC stains. Um, in our algorithms and in our models, we have trained um, our, our models for sort of the conversion dependent on the specific um, you know, antigens the cells have uh, in, in our training set. So the so the so our analytics take that data, they take that in the predictive analysis and these trends and apply it to future samples. So it's really, um, you know, sort of, we have sort of segregated and segmented our, our training set accordingly. And so in 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 new H and E images, when it's it's a new image that's being virtually stained, the our, our algorithms use that previous data and the previous analytics and and trends to sort of predict um, a new stained image. Okay, and and you guys, everyone who's here, if you have more questions, please email us, um, and we'd be more than happy to answer, even set up a call, whatever questions you have, and and we can sort of go through. Um, Go, go through the discussions in real time also if you need. Okay, I see one more question. Are the IHC images that are tested in the model randomly generated or are they based on real IHC stain image uh, sections? They're based on real IHC stain sections. Um, our, our training set has, uh, you know, we have sort of taken real IHC stained sections and that um, to help us generate the virtually stained images in the training models, of course. Yes, I see another question. How many antibodies do you have available ER and PR only? ER and PR right now, yes. KI67 is in process next. Um, and act actually, a part of this discussion is also if anyone has suggestions or requests on sort of, um, you know, ant future antibodies that you guys want us to focus on, we're happy to take that recommendations. But yes, ER, PR right now, KI67 in process, that should be available shortly as well. Oh, another thing, if you if you have colleagues or if you know anyone else who would benefit from this presentation, from this technology, please do um, reach out to us. We would be happy to share the recording of this presentation so that you can also discuss with your colleagues internally as well. OK, I see a really nice, interesting question. Is the expectation for the pathologist to make their diagnostics based on the virtual stains? Um, you know, this is really one really depends on the pathologists themselves. But this again goes back to the question of artificial intelligence in any in any industry, right? Or, or especially in pathology. Artificial intelligence is not meant to one replace pathologists. Of course, it can never replace pathologists. It is meant 
to supplement and aid pathologists in, you know, speeding up their diagnosis so that they can just get to more patients. And that's really it. So the expectation for pathologists is really, again, um, dependent on the pathologists themselves. For But what we are really doing is we're really helping the aid them and guide them and supplement their decision making process um, in 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 uh, by this virtually generated images. So what we're expecting right now is for the pathologist to view the virtually stained IHC image and to to sort of even know if they want to proceed forward, um, you know, and if they want to make the diagnosis based on simply just that, or they actually want to take an IHC stain, um, a really uh, histologically stained IHC sample and then make that diagnosis. So it's it's really uh, a personal decision. Uh, we're here. What we are done with this technology, with the reason we created this technology, was to supplement them, to provide them with a support system, so that, that they can speed up and you know make the, this process more efficient and and you know go through more samples. That's really it. And as this technology you know, develops more in, in the future and as we sort of start using it. So we have uh, a few uh, pathologists all over the world that have started using this, a few labs that have started using this technology. So as and when we, you know, continue using this technology going forward, um, you know, pathologists and, uh, you know, labs will get more and more comfortable with the outputs, more and more comfortable with, um, you know, making the diagnosis through the virtually stained images. And of course, again, it's, it's really the last decision is on the pathologists themselves, whether they want to make the diagnosis simply based off of that or not. OK, all right, so I don't see any more questions coming in. Um, OK, I see one more question, actually. So can we get the virtual stains out of any whole slide image or does it need to be from an OptoScan scanner? No, it could be um, from any whole slide image um, it, it, as long as it is supported by our software. So our software is pretty compatible with the standard um, you know, image formats. So as long as it is, is one of the standard uh, image formats, we can get the virtual stains of that image uh, as long as it opens up in the software. Marsha White has this question, is this technology FDA approved in the US? Um, no, it is not. We are in the process of filing for our FDA application right now as we speak. We are 50% done. Um, well, actually, we're 70% done. We have the last 30% left. Uh, so then once that is done, then yes, then it'll be FDA approved. Do you have some studies showing the concordance between your IHC stain and physical um, stain? Yes. So we're currently in the midst of exactly doing this concordance study. Um, we are working with labs um, that to, to sort of find that concordance and to, to execute the study. And we will be sharing the results with, with the group as well. Um, so please, if you are interested, do leave us your email um, or just reach out to us on info at optoscan.com. And we would be happy to show you uh, the studies and show you the concordance and sh sort of show you more data and about about this te technology as well. And also, if you guys just have feedback, you know, I mean, you're um, a lot of you are in the pathology space. This is something that, you know, is new. You may or may not have heard of this before, so would love to also just get your feedback if if you have any.
Can you run the, uh, I see another question. Can you run the AI on any tissue or is it restricted to certain cancers of tissues? Yes, so we do, we're focusing on breast cancer right now, um, followed by, so first we're gonna do breast, then prostate, lung, um, so breast cancer for now. This is, and again, this is only for the virtual staining. Um, if it comes to the AI-based analytics in general uh, that OptraScan offers, then we do breast, lung, prostate, um, and brain cancer as well. Okay, all right. Um, I think this brings us to the end of the webinar. Um, if there's any follow-up questions, like I have mentioned, please reach us. Reach out to us, info at optoscan.com. If anyone is ex interested in testing out this, getting a free trial of this technology, um, you know, we're happy to sort of help you with it. Again, reach out to us on info at optoscan.com, and we can get you set up. If anyone needs has any needs in digital pathology or has is interested in scanners or software and analytics, again, same thing, info at optoscan.com. But thank you once again to everyone who joined in and listened and asked really good questions. This is a new and interesting and exciting um, you know, time for everyone in the pathology space. And we're really excited to be at the front end and pioneering of you know, exciting innovations. This technology is only meant to sort of help and aid and support pathologists so that we can eventually positively impact the patient at the end of everything that we do. So thank you once again. Um, it was really good having you here and I was really excited to discuss this with everyone and have a nice day, morning, afternoon, night, depending on where everyone is and uh, see you soon for the next webinar, we hope. Thank you.